the market shift that has happened in the last 18 months to 24 months, it truly has, you know, caught many agents by surprise because if you think about it, the average age or average experience level of an agent in NAR is eight years. Mm-hmm. Well, we had almost 11 years of consecutive run up. So you've got a lot of agents out there that are lacking kind of fundamental skill set. And I think many agents, you know, believe I'm a negotiator, but I also think that market climate in the last 10 years has really kind of precipitated being a messenger. We sort of assume that maybe our sphere of influence actually understands the market conditions as we see them. They actually don't. And so focusing on seller education, given all of the changes is a huge advantage right now. What is your digital resume? What is your social media presence? How are you marketing not only yourself, but your success on social and on other, you know, other platforms, your website, etc. Welcome back to Nevada Realtors Today, your place for timely updates on the news and trends that matter to realtors in the Silver State. Now let's join your Nevada Realtors President, Brandon Roberts, and Nevada Realtors CEO, Tiffany Banks, for today's episode of Nevada Realtors Today. Hey, Amy. Thank you. So Amy, I have a question right out of the gates. How we're just going to jump right in. We're going to jump right in. How have you okay. seen the real estate industry evolve over the last decade? And what trends do you believe are particularly relevant for Nevada Realtors today? For sure. Well, first of all, hello to my um, hometown and my uh, birth state. I am a native Nevadan. So I spent a long time uh, you know, in my career there in uh, Nevada. So I'm really, really happy to be with all of you as an agent, a team leader, a broker owner for a long time, and then had the opportunity to come to this side and uh, lead Remax. So I'm really happy to be coming to all of you because I, I'm sure that I know lots of people who are on the call today. So thanks for having me, Tiffany and Brandon. I really appreciate the time. So industry trends. So we joked a minute ago, Tiffany, about, you know, what have we seen over the last 30 years, which, you know, means we're dating ourselves because I've been in the industry almost that long, about 28 years. So we're going to focus on like this decade to help our audience a little bit. So obviously it goes without saying, you know, you've been living in this world, Tiffany, I've been living in this world for really the last, you know, 18 months at least. And that is, you know, all of the practice changes that are a result of the settlement in about 20 of 50 states in the U.S., you know, buyer representation agreements were required. Now, I happen to know that in Nevada, they weren't, um, but they were readily available, right? Mm-hmm. Buyer agency has been around since the 1990s, and I think that's something really important for people to recognize. But what these practice changes really mean for agents is overwhelmingly being able to articulate your value, being able to have a full conversation about what it means for a buyer to be represented because there are distinct advantages. And also, what does it mean for a seller to decide, do they want to offer compensation to the other side? Do they not want to offer compensation to the other side? And then ultimately coming full circle to have that transparent conversation with buyers about how an agent is paid. So I think the practice changes really when you break it down, that's in a nutshell. And I think it offers transparency for the buyer, clarity for the buyer, as well as the seller. Commissions have always been negotiable. I think we all know that. And, um, but this, you know, it, it really shines a spotlight on skill is necessary in the business. And I think that agents who don't transact very often will find that it is a little bit more challenging out there for them to keep up with industry changes and be able to really articulate their values. So that's my advice is making sure that you're honing in on your skill set. That is definitely a trend that is not going away um, Mm -hmm. in, in the future. The other thing is that I would add technology and AI. Mm -hmm. You know, I love AI. I don't know about you, Tiffany. Do you use it frequently? I've just started and actually we taught, we've actually been talking a lot about making sure that the realtor stays at the center of the transaction, but has all of the support of AI and that that's right. Our agents through. That's right. And I love that you're getting in front of it because AI is here to stay. Technology Mm -hmm. is here to stay, but I, absolutely do not believe that 
technology or AI will replace the relationship and the importance that an agent brings to facilitating the transaction on behalf of buyers and sellers. But I will say this, agents who don't use technology and AI, they will likely be replaced because I'll, I'll break it down for you because this is another trend that's coming forward. And that has to do with sheer demographics. The millennials are in their home household formation years. They are an enormous generation. Mm -hmm. And in couple that with 65 million baby boomers that are all going to be, you know, right in that range of 65 um, and, and older, of course, they are going to be retiring. So you've got a lot of population that's going to need to downsize, but you've also got the next generation of buyers that are in their household formation years. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Average age of a realtor is 57. Mm -hmm. Average age of a millennial right now, they are 26, I believe, to 42. Mm -hmm. They don't want to transact in the way that many agents learned to transact. They actually want to transact right here. Mm -hmm. And so I really believe that, you know, agents who embrace technology and where they provide that seamless transaction where their value is, is not minimized at all, it's enhanced. Mm -hmm. um, but that is what your next generation of buyers are going to be looking for. And so that is a trend that's not going away. When you couple that with AI, for example, I'll give you, um, you know, an idea. We have a um, full platform that our agents have access to, um, Max Tech powered by Bold Trail. Mm -hmm. And there's AI built into it. So, for example, when someone asks a question on that property, right. it, on a property in the middle of the night, it's like, well, I would like to know some information. We have AI empowered, um, you know, so you don't to respond. respond in your client at 2 a.m. Correct. Exactly. Okay. And so, but what do we know that consumers want? They want that responsiveness. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's just one example of many, many ways that, that technology and AI can really help an agent excel. Um, they can really, AI can be a collaborative partner. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think that it's an incredible um, evolution within our industry. And it's also a trend that is not going to go away. And so I think you said it earlier, Tiffany, those who use it, I mean, don't be intimidated by it. Just start using it. Now you're going to want to make sure you do that safely. So listen to Tiffany about best practices and what you should put into AI and what you shouldn't put into AI. Um, you know, I can't ever take that broker hat off. I led agents for so many years that I know right how they think it's like, be careful a little bit, but foundationally, the only way to learn how to use AI is to use it. Mm -hmm. And I think it becomes overwhelming in a lot of the conversations that Brandon and I have had over the last six months is you just almost don't know where to start, right? You yeah. think that there's so many platforms out there. There's so many tools, but what's the right yep. tool for me as that agent. And, you know, you have Second Century Ventures, which we've talked about a lot um, through NAR and the REACH program, where they actually do a lot of that work for you, where they're able to look into what these founders are doing, have practitioners engaged in this tech so that it actually can go to market in a way that agents can be successful and thrive in using it, but actually they've narrowed it down. So they're saying, these are the platforms that again, you don't have to use them all. You don't even have to use, you know, take them or leave them, they are. try yeah. them, right? And it seems like it's pretty inexpensive to at least mm -hmm. kind of start and play with some of them and see what works and see, see what doesn't. Absolutely. I would agree with that completely. And when you think about for you all and like for Remax and kind of, you know, like to, to us, you are such a trendsetter. And I think that, you know, that might sound cliche, but, you know, you're always trying to think of like innovative ways to, sure. to you know, set yourselves apart. Um, what What's something else behind besides those two things that you would recommend of like this just kind of forward thinking? And it could be anything from being, being extraordinarily responsive to your client to like how you set up your business model. Like what are things that you're guiding your team now to be like the most successful? Sure. Well, a couple of things, uh, first of all, is being aware of the upcoming transfer of generational wealth. 80 trillion is going to transfer over the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. Couple that with Gen Z and millennials. Gen Z, their lowest age right now is age 12. Well, if wealth transfer is going to happen over 20 years, they are 
also in line, you know, towards the tail end in their household formative years. And these generations are massive. So making sure that you level up that skill set to ensure that you are transacting in the way that those buyers want to be served, not mm-hmm. the way that we all learned before. The other thing is we have a group here called the Torchbearers. They are our top five agents under 40 in every single state. And so we just did a live webinar with a variety of them and talked about, you know, their average gross commission income is $386,000 a year. They are an incredibly productive group. So we wanted to broadcast to the network, what are you doing out there to make you successful? And after being in the business for almost 30 years, it was really interesting because a lot of our, our business is still foundational. And so one of the things that they brought forward is they said, look, we are constantly in front of our sphere of, sphere of influence. So that continual outreach and making sure that they consistently are in front of their sphere of influence and, you know, their past clients so that they can generate referrals and repeat business, that has not changed. That group is very, very focused. However, many of them use technology to innovate how they do it, how often they do it, um, and in what ways they do it. But that is a key going forward, even though it's a fundamental, leveraging technology and AI to help propel your business forward is is definitely something that I would say agents need to lean into to finish 2024 strong, but also begin 2025 um, with a bang. I think sometimes towards the tail end of the year, agents kind of say, It's been, you know, been a year. I'm going to take a little bit of time off. I did that once and uh, I learned my lesson. It took me about 90 days to recover after I took December off. (laughs) So I would not recommend that. So no advice and rest and relax. (laughs) No, you know, take some time over the holidays, but don't take the whole month. That's for sure not. And make sure that you've got a business plan. How am I going to, um, you know, grow my business into 2025? And right now is the time for agents to start thinking about that. Well, it actually sounds really intentional. You know, I think that sometimes, you know, when when things seem, and obviously there have been years in real estate where things seem easier, or it seems like easier to get a client, easier to make a earn a commission. But if things are tougher, right? It's like, what are you doing with intentionality to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success? Absolutely. And I think, you know, the market changes with, you know, uh, higher rates and lack of inventory and, you know, just overall what the market shift that has happened in the last 18 months to 24 months, it truly has, you know, caught many agents by surprise. Because if you think about it, the average age or average experience level of an agent in NAR is eight years. Hmm. Well, we had almost 11 years of consecutive run-up. So you've got a lot of agents out there that are lacking kind of fundamental skill set. And I would say that that is, you know, how do I price properties in a changing market, for example? They've never had to actually gain a high level of skill in pricing properties in perhaps a declining market, right? That's a different skill set than what they've seen in the last 10 years. In addition, negotiating skills, huge fundamental. And I think many agents, you know, believe I'm a negotiator, but I also think that market climate in the last 10 years has really kind of precipitated being a messenger. Like, well, there's you know, this is the only house on the market. And so seller has picked their price and highest bidder is going to win, right? That's not actually negotiating. And so I think that when a market declines, you, you really have to negotiate with the seller to help them understand how to price competitively in a changing market. You sometimes have to negotiate with the other side, managing expectations from, you know, the other agent on the other side. You also have to manage expectations with the buyers. So there's, you know, so many pieces of negotiation that are coming into play that maybe got minimized a little bit during, you know, the 10 years of, of consecutive run-up. So I think some of those foundational skills for agents, they need to make sure that they're really paying attention to those and that they're gaining an edge there. Mm-hmm. Brandon, are you seeing the same things with your agents as far as, you know, they have an eye on where the generational wealth is shifting and having these conversations with them now? Yeah, she's spot on. And and this is the time of the year, like 
she was talking about is is planning going into the next year um and, and not taking the time off uh you mentioned that um you know you took you about 90 days to recover when you took a a december off once and and that's truly like our sales cycle right um what we do today we get paid 30 60 90 days down the road and so yeah we're pushing our agents same way as is right now is the time to build your listing inventory if you want to have, start next year off strong, you've got to have you've got to have sales in the pipeline. I think that's so well said, Brandon. I think one thing too is that we sort of assume that maybe our sphere of influence actually understands the market conditions as we see them. They actually don't, and so focusing on seller education given all of the changes is a huge advantage right now because they can actually lead sellers to understand what are the benefits of entering the market right now with interest rates uh, potentially easing, um, more inventories coming on the market in a lot of um, areas across the country. And so how do you time that appropriately? What is the benefit to a seller? Because lots of sellers have held off on making their own moves um, you know, waiting for rates and 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 waiting for inventory for them to move to. And so I think I can't stress enough seller education. There is a reason for you to call your sphere and educate them on what's going on in the market today. Well, yeah, and I, I believe that agents drive the market. And if we're not making those conversations and creating the deals, so to speak, um, it doesn't move and we get a little bit stagnant. And for example, like we've had some pretty experienced agents that have sold good, good amount of real estate over, over the past few years through their sphere. And all of a sudden their phone stops and it's because the, the consumer or their clients or past clients don't realize that now is really a time to buy either by hearing the news and being educated elsewhere. Um, so it's important that our agents are reaching out and creating the market today. Completely. Absolutely. You build your own pipeline. And one thing that mm -hmm. I know for sure, no matter what happens in the market, people are going to buy and sell homes mm -hmm. towards the end of this year and going into next year. So you've got to be the one that they see as the person who's going to help them through it. Yep. Life happens. Yeah. Life happens. I think that brings me to one more thing, Tiffany. Um, and that is, you know, we just did a study on the future of real estate and one in four millennials, they found their agent on Facebook. Does that surprise anybody? That's kind of surprising to me. I really think that that is um, kind of an emerging trend. Hmm. And what that says to me is that what is your digital resume? What is your social media presence? Mm -hmm. How are you marketing not only yourself, right. but your success? on social and on other, you know, other platforms, your website, et cetera. And are you really intentionally building your, you know, social media presence, but also your digital resume? Because what's happening is, is literally they are stalking you online before they ever reach out to you. So you have to make sure that, you know, your digital resume and your social media pre presence is one of being a professional and mm -hmm. one of being, uh, you know, localized market knowledge and expertise. Mm -hmm. So lots of, you know, support and help out there. Right. Um, you That's know, we bad. offer. Yeah. It, I mean, it's really, again, these emerging trends with the millennials and the next generation, you know, are really key because we do have a gap between the average age of an agent, you know, versus the, the wave of home buyers that's in the market. So that means that if you are not engaged in social media or keeping up on it or showing, you know, like that you're available and you're busy working and that you're a uh, busy working, I think they want to know that whoever they're going to hire is going to work for them, right? For them. And, sure. with them. and it's actually interesting because Brandon and I just, I think we heard another statistic recently. I don't even know if it was a, a statistic or if it was a comment on um, once you reach out to a buyer's agent, like, I don't know what study it is, so I'm not, don't quote me, but it was something along the lines of like a client or potential client does not want to reach out to like 10 different buyer's agents. So if they call you and you're able to engage, you're able to have some sort of answer for them on the spot, you're able to be prepared and be knowledgeable, like that, that potential client is most likely going to turn into a client. They don't want to really have to shop around. Does that surprise you? 
Or does that make sense to you? I think that's spot on. I mean, first of all, um, speed is the name of the game when it comes to responding to lead inquiries. Hmm. Yet, 52% of online leads go unanswered by agents. Mm. So can you imagine uh, owning a business and you only actually answer the phone 50% of the time? Mm -hmm. It's kind of a crazy industry statistic. Yet 83% of buyers worked with the agent who actually got in touch with them the soonest. Mm. I mean, Absolutely an amazing statistic. And so, you know, we have to understand it. Here's another way that, like we mentioned earlier, AI can help. Um, Lead incubation services can help with that. Um, So there's lots of ways that, that, you know, you don't have to be connected to your phone Mm 24-7, but you have to make sure that you have a system of support. Yep. Exactly. And I mean, I know for myself, if I'm calling, you know, if, if I see if I need a service done and I look at 10 mm-hmm. different numbers and I'm calling them all and nobody's answering the one person that answers. And, and I think we live in a time now that we do expect, you know, like immediate response or we do expect that immediate engagement. And if we miss it, like, I don't even remember the person I called first because they didn't answer. And so sure. I already moved on. And this is for, for like the smallest of services. Right. And so I right. think, that's so important. And again, we're not saying as a real estate agent, as a realtor, don't be, don't have another life. Like don't be at your kid's soccer game. Right. Don't, but have some sort of system in place so that if your phone does ring, that you're prepared or with AI, that some, someone or yeah. something is prepared to at least be immediately responsive and get the ball rolling. So you don't miss out on an opportunity. Yeah. And I think another thing in the future real estate study that we did, um, 36% of millennials said that the agent, you know, is an important, you know, piece of their home buying journey. But I mean, some people might go, oh no, they don't value agents. Not true. The other component that they valued was agent in combination of AI. Hmm. So that popped it up to like 68% when you combine those two. And so they are using all of these tools to inform themselves about the home buying process. But they also recognize that grassroots local knowledge is excuse me, incredibly important. You know, I'll tell you a little story. I moved to Colorado about two years ago. Mm-hmm. And look, I've been in the business almost 30 years. So could I have represented myself? Of course I could have. But the first thing that I did was I hired a Remax agent, of course. And, uh, you know, she walked me through from start to finish. She told me I needed a roof inspection. Well, coming from Nevada, we don't get that much rain. So you don't see a lot of roof inspections, but they're done routinely here because we have really bad hailstorms. She said, you need something in your file that shows that the roof was in good condition prior to closing. Otherwise, the insurance company might try to deny a claim if you don't have this. So I said, great, we're doing the roof inspection. Well, what happened that next summer? Catastrophic hailstorm needed a new roof. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, when you really think about what we do for as agents, Mm -hmm. it's all those little things. It's negotiating possession. It's negotiating repairs. It's advising on those little nuances about, hey, in our in our world, we have a lot of hailstorms. This is why you need this. And so, you know, agents need to really, really understand how to articulate their value because that matters not only to existing buyers and sellers that are in the market today, but it also matters to the millennials who are coming into their household formation years, that, that they value that expertise, but they right. want it to be tech enabled. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, their was, experience. I don't know if you remember this, but you were the listing agent on the first home that I purchased. I do and, remember that. And what I remember, and again, this is why no matter who you're representing, who your client is, like be like, like go above and beyond to make that transaction feel like, like that home buying experience for us could not have gone better. And I know that I remember we had you know, something that came up with the windows and, and you were Mm -hmm. so on it with just making sure that like the transaction ran smooth and that, you know, the buyer and seller were able to work together and come to terms to close the transaction. And so obviously I know, I knew you personally as well. So the first day I became legal counsel here. And, um, but like that, I think also 
um, I had a whole new level of respect for you and like the work that oh. you did because I was able to see from the other side because you, you have those situations where you feel like, you know, buyer and seller working against each other or it's like, sure. what can I get? But but I think actually being mindful of making mm-hmm. sure that the whole experience is great because you never yes. the next time then you want, you know, to use an agent. Maybe you weren't as happy with your agent because it wasn't, but to have that sure. like, great experience um you know and then we have that first asset that we were able to then sell and you know mm-hmm. buy it buy another home and then buy another home and so I don't know if I've ever shared with you just you know how great I didn't. You, <laughs> that it was such a great experience uh for me and it really again stood out to me the impact that working together how much further you're able to go in this world and to you know to have that experience for your client well, first of all, thanks for that. Kudos. I do remember those difficulties, but we we got it worked out. Yeah. And I do think, you know, as an industry, we are stronger together and we are stronger working together. That is one area of our industry sometimes that I think that could stand to be improved. Um, you know, I, I heard this phrase the other day and it was, they were talking about, you know, negotiating and working through difficulty and conversations. And it was like, taking the perspective of looking at it like a knot. Hey, help me untie this knot. We have a knot. How can we work together to untie it? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we have to represent our buyer's interests and our seller's interests. And sometimes those compete. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we are there to fulfill, you know, our buyer's and seller's goals and their dreams. And their dreams rarely have to do with winning this particular deal component. It usually has to do with something larger, like my children need to start school. They need to, you know, get there within the next 45 days. And I really need to make this happen, but I'm really stressed. How can we make this easy? Mm -hmm. You know, coming at problems from a, how can we work together instead of, I'm going to beat you up because, you know, this deal dynamic isn't going well. You know, that is not the value of an agent. The value of an agent is solving really hard problems and finding the win-win for both sides um, to the best of their ability. You can't compromise your seller's or your buyer's interests. But at the end of the day, that is what we do. And your best agents do it really, really well. They find the solution. Um, And I think that that's an area where our industry, you know, can elevate um, in that collaborative approach to how do we untie the knot together and how do we get these two people, you know, onto their next destination um, and do it in a winning way. Couldn't agree more. Um, Do you, can you think of a time like your biggest challenge that you faced, whether on a team or leading a team and what advice you could give to any of our listeners on how I don't know if I have a specific like, you know, situation, but I do have a strategy that I use very, very often. When you find yourself rising up in anger because you're like, I told this agent this wasn't going to work and here they wrote this offer like this and I'm not going to be able to get it, blah, 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 right? You do all this stuff. Um, get curious. Get curious. Say, so Tiffany, when we talked last I mentioned that the timeline for the seller is super, super important. And I see here that this is written a little bit differently than we discussed. Can you help me understand what's your buyer's strategy here? How can we work together to solve this? Because my seller kind of has an absolute no-go on this, but your offer is important. So talk to me about what your buyer is trying to accomplish. Hmm. That is way different. So get curious. Start asking questions about what are we trying to accomplish? Why is it important? How can we work together? And you will find that a lot of conflict will dissipate. If you just say, why is that so important to your client? Help me understand. Why is that important to you? How could we do it differently? What would it look like if we did it differently? I mean, do you see how you just are changing the whole nature of the conversation by getting curious? So I think that would be, you know, my advice. I I don't know if I can remember a particular transaction where that was used, but I think I use it almost every day. I think that that sounds like great advice. And I think when you become curious, you're able to actually see 
maybe even the truth behind. It's like we can come up with all these different reasons or rationale of why we we believe something is a certain way when that's not even the truth behind it. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Brandon, you have a question? Yeah. So, so Amy, um, do you think it's it's still a good time for agents to get into the business? And if so, what advice would you give to a newer agent that maybe hasn't developed their sphere or their book of business? So I I love this business. You know, all of us, you know, we we were all new agents at one point in time. I will say this, that the shifts in the industry and the market climate today is absolutely necessitating deep skill set. So if you are thinking about getting into the business, you really need to think about how much time can you devote to your profession? Are you going to jump in, you know, with both feet and going to devote full time, full focus, full effort? Um, How are you going to level up the skill set? And then I think the very nature of the market as well demands speed. So what is your level of availability? Are you able to go ahead and get out there and, you know, show that property that came on the market that your client has been waiting for? Or are there other constraints that you have to consider? One of the best parts about our business is the flexibility that it offers. Mm -hmm. But I will say that market conditions and the industry changes, I think skill set is absolutely paramount. And so if you're going to get in, you have got to align with a company that is going to help you level up your skill set. And you will have to learn varied skill sets. I mean, when I got into the market, it was a buyer's market very, very clearly. Well, now you've got kind of micro markets, right? You've got, you know, some price points are behaving differently than other price points. So you have to have a skill set in how do I work in a buyer's market? How do I work in a seller's market? And then it might change in six months, depending on what happens with interest rates, inventory levels, and any other factors. So, you know, for an agent to come in and develop the skill set that they need in order to succeed, you know, they've got to think about that. And they also, I think I would encourage those that have, you know, you need to have some form of a sphere of influence and or a plan for how you will build your sphere of influence, because that is a core fundamental. Um, I think one thing that would be really, really difficult to do, it's not impossible, I've seen it many times, is for somebody to relocate to another area. They don't have really a sphere of influence within that area, and then they want to try to get into real estate. That's going to be a little bit difficult unless they maybe think about a team environment um, where there's a surplus of leads. That's an opportunity. Um, But foundationally, I think really getting honest about what does it take to be successful in this business aligning with a group that is going to, you know, a company that is going to really help you level up your skill set and then making sure that you have that sphere of influence that you can lean on and tap into to drive business now. Very good. Um, So let's see, we got a whole list of questions for you, but trying to find one that'd be Really interesting. Oh, let me let me just do this. So you got in business almost 30 years ago. I got in in 96 as well. What did you do before real estate? I was in college. <laughs> I got in right out of college. So I graduated from oh, this is UNR. It. This is it. I here's what I did. I, you know, I graduated with my degree in speech pathology and audiology. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I'd always loved real estate. My dad was a real estate developer and I decided to give real estate a try. And I said, I'm going to give real estate three years, just like I would my master's degree. And I'm going to travel across the country. I'm going to go to as much education as I can, just like I would if I got my master's degree. And then I'm going to evaluate after three years if I actually like this business. Well, I think the rest is history because I stayed in the business and I fell in love with it. Um, and so, yeah, I was a college student prior to, and I had miscellaneous jobs, of course. Did you have any desire to continue? I mean, now in your role, think about your trajectory and how you ended up here. Was that all part of a plan or did, (laughs) how did, how did the shift happen to where you are today? You know, it's interesting. Um, you know, I was talking to my coach 
uh, two weeks before I had talked with someone here at headquarters about the opportunity to come to the to the HQ side. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I said is I said, you know, I would like a broader, bigger platform so that I can influence more people's lives, help agents be more professional and more productive and ultimately help them lead, you know, help them build great businesses, profitable businesses. And then same thing for brokers. I think brokers are sort of underserved and in some ways undervalued in the industry. They take all the risk. They are there to make sure that the agents are building productive businesses. And so I really wanted to help brokers, you know, um, learn how to, you know, attract an agent that they might want to serve, keep the agents that they have, and then help their agents be more productive. So those were sort of the lenses that I looked through. And I really didn't see the path to HQ, but I think sometimes when you get clear about what you do want next, what you want next, that, um, you know, things open up. And so when the, when the call came, just wondering if I would even ever consider coming to this side, I thought, oh my gosh, I don't think so. (laughs) Uh, Because, you know, I'm an entrepreneur at heart and, um, you know, through multiple talks and uh, multiple visions about what does it look like and how can we, you know, have more of those perspectives on this side for the people that we're serving. Um, I felt very fortunate that, um, you know, the opportunity came up and then I said yes, because if I didn't love this company before, which I loved it a lot, I really, really love it now. And I feel very honored to, you know, lead this brand and lead our, lead our agents across the globe. Well, you do a phenomenal job. We we know wow. that. I see you everywhere. I think <laughs> it, it is so impressive to see. You know, I mean, you're on. I don't even know how many stages I've seen you on this year alone. I think that you're so immersed in our industry, not only like this high level, but actually like in the trenches too, which I think is just again like I, I just you inspire me every day. And thank so, you. You know, I'm... Well, I really appreciate that, but I would be remiss. It is not just me. I have an entire team of people and we have an incredible network that, you know, absolutely steps up to help support each other every single day. So I, I, it's not just me. It is our entire team every single day. So I feel you really need lucky a solid about that. Team. You definitely need a solid team around you and finding that yes. team is key. For sure. If you could magically solve one common real estate problem overnight, what would it be and how would that change the game for clients or for agents? Uh, One problem overnight, I would say it all ties to skill for me. Mm -hmm. I believe that the barrier to entry into our business is a little bit low, right? But the barrier to success is quite high. And so I think that, you know, the evolution of the industry, particularly with these practice changes um, and and the fact that the market changes have, you know, precipitated, you know, much more of a spotlight in the eyes of consumers on Mm -hmm. why hiring a trusted professional is important. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we're in the process of that, but it isn't a magic wand yet. But that is definitely, I think that would be my answer. Awesome. Brandon, do you have anything else? Yeah, I would just say, what piece of advice are you giving to your brokers today in this market? Given to the agents and stuff, you know what I mean? Uh, in the in the changing with the, the settlement and stuff, but, but I know brokers have struggled with this too, so. Lead through change. Um, you know, I think it's too easy to get way into the headlines, which frankly, have we seen a few wrong headlines the last six, eight, nine, 12 months? We really have. The clickbait and the sensationalism of what's going on out there actually has caused, I think, a little bit of a hit to an agent's reputation. That's why I think it's critically important that brokers lead through change, make sure that their agents have deep education, deep skill set, so that they can be out in their respective spheres, markets, leading that piece of change, right? Brokers lead the change with agents. Agents lead the change with buyers and sellers and consumers out there. So I think, you know, everybody has to step up and lead um, without without a doubt. Mm -hmm. And do you think encouraging agents to make sure that they're focused on those that aren't buying homes yet 
that are in the pipeline in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years? Like, is that just building relationships or what does that look like for you? Well, millennials are in the market today already. So, you know, and they are a massive generation. So, uh, you know, they're in their formative years. And, you know, I should know this right off the top of my head, but I think that the youngest is 26 at this Mm -hmm. point. So, you know, there's a whole bunch um, in front that are already, they are selling and moving up and they are also buying their first home. So they're already out there in the marketplace. And that's why it's important that, you know, agents level their skill set up in order to serve those buyers and sellers, how they want to be served today. Absolutely. So you don't see a lot of them staying, living at home with mom and dad. Like they're actually wanting, even if they move home for a little bit, they're actually wanting to move out, buy their first home and start that pathway towards generational wealth. Yeah. In our, in our, uh, future of real estate study, it shows that, you know, the vast majority of millennials, they absolutely value home ownership uh, because I think that's a, that's a trend that maybe I heard I don't know maybe a year or two ago that it's like no nah, they want to rent they don't want to buy. Mm-hmm. Well, not according to the research that we're seeing that they really actually do value home ownership because they see it as an asset, but they also value community and they value their family structure. They want to be um, you know close to services, close to family. And uh, so it's interesting what's important to this group. And obviously, as it changes, as they get a little bit older. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you said it, community is everything. And I think that um, that's a lot of what we can focus on now is actually building community, right? Not just everyone in silos are looking out for themselves, but actually building the community around them. We just got back actually from building a house in Mexico and it was incredible to take a group of Nevada realtors and see, you know, like every day they're helping buy and sell homes and make dreams come true and actually be able to be boots on the ground and help a family that didn't have everything have a home in two days. It was, it was very powerful. And so, but it was incredible. The same word, the same word kept coming up was community. Like that's what we're creating and that's what, that's That's right. You know, the the goal is. That's the beauty of what we do as Mm -hmm. agents and even as brokers out there, you know, we impact the lives of our agents. And then of course our agents impact the lives of their clients. And I think that that is, it's one of the best seats in the house. Um, So I love that story, Tiffany. Thank you. And if our listeners want to find you, how can how can they find you, follow you, make sure that, again, they stay up to date on um, everything that you guys are doing? Because I believe that you're absolutely like a part of being a trendsetter and moving our industry forward. Thank you. I appreciate that. So my email, anybody, it's open to anybody. It's amy, A-M-Y at remax.com. That's very easy. Believe it or not, I actually see them, read them and respond to them. So please don't spam me to death. Um, but nonetheless, I am. I, I love to talk to both our agents inside and outside of our network. Um, the other thing is I'm all over social under Amy Lessinger. So easy to find out there. And uh, but thank you so much. It's been fun. Thank you so much, Brandon. Do you have anything else? I just say uh, thank you for your time. It was really nice to meet you. Um, I've heard your name a lot, but this is the first time I've gotten to meet you. So, Likewise. Thank well, you. thank you, Brandon. And it's good to see my hometown and, and my home state. So I really, really appreciate the opportunity. I'm back here anytime. You're welcome. Thanks, Tiffany. Thanks, Amy. I appreciate that. Okay, thank you, guys. Bye. See ya.